Hi guys, I'm here in my studio and I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're going to be doing next. Um, we started working on grid drawings as um, a trick or a tool, a technique that we can use to make good, accurate drawings. It's a really good way to start out learning about drawing and learning about how to um, see things, how to train our eyes, how to make measurements. And I just want to show you real quick how that it. It's not just a um, something that you do in the very beginning. You can keep doing this um, as you go on in your artistic career. So I wanna show you this painting right here. This is um, one of my students in my studio who I work with, and she is using the grid technique. You can see, if you look closely, um, the grid lines that run on her canvas. This is the, first, the very first layer. It's a, um, a drawing layer that she's going to paint over. Now, the interesting thing is though that she's working from life. This is a still life setup next to it. And yet she's still using the grid technique. And how that works is pretty cool. We created, let's see if you can see this, um, a grid frame and I'm holding it up against the wall. So hopefully you can see the, the strings that run through it. Um, there are strings that run through this that create a grid that then would go over top of um, that go over top of the the still life setup, and so she could use the grid the grid technique um, while working from life. Now, a lot of artists today use the grid um, to work photorealistically. They want their artwork to look exactly like a photograph, and that is that's a really an excellent way to do it. But uh, historically, in the Renaissance. The artists did not use it to create, uh, to work from photos, of course, because there were no photos, there were no cameras, um, but they still used grids and they used them because they would create a, um, a drawing in a small size that then they would ex want to make very, very large, like for a wall painting, a fresco, and then they would make it um, very large by gridding it first and then they could look at their squares and expand it in the squares. So hopefully we will have time, we'll get back in the classroom and we'll have time to actually do some of this enlargement. I got some really great, really, really big paper that I'm thinking we can make some pretty cool drawings with. Um, but for now, we're going to keep working, we're going to keep practicing our, um, just our technique of measurement and getting used to working with the grid. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do to get started is um, to pick out uh, one of the, the animal pictures that I uploaded for you. Um, these came from a book that I have. That they're just nice and clear pictures, so I think that they're a really good place for us to do our, our first actual grid drawing from. Once we get back into the classroom, um, you guys are going to get to choose your own, um, choose what you want to do, and we'll have a lot of different great drawings going on. But for the time being, let's everybody pick one of those. Um, and the first thing we're going to do, once you print it out, so we're going to draw the grid onto this. This you can do in uh, pencil, or you can do in pen, like especially if you have like a fine tip Sharpie, that might actually be helpful too. The first thing you're going to do is take your ruler and you're going to decide on sort of the outlines of, of what you want to do. Now, we're gonna end up calling this, um, by the time you're, you're in sixth grade and we're working on this technique but a little bit different, we call this notional space. It's, it's the space that we create around it. Um, but it's also deciding on the picture plane, what, what we want it to be. So you can make it like the entire size of this, but because it kind of cuts off here, um, I'm actually gonna make it a little smaller. So I want you to get out your ruler first of all, and you're going to um, decide how many inches wide you want it to be. And in this case, I'm just going to go to seven. So I lined up um, with this very first line here with the, with the edge, and then I'm going over to here, uh, and this is going to be seven inches wide. And then I'm going to just double check. Um, I want to make sure, and this is very, very important with grid drawing, you have to make sure that your lines are straight at all times. Um, wobbly lines, lines that are at an angle, those are going to be the death of your drawing. They will throw everything off. If you have a T-square, um, this is a good time to get it out and use it. But even if you just have a ruler, 
um, lining it up, checking to make sure that it's about the same distance away. These are the kind of things that you can do to make it straight. You can actually even go like, um, go and see if you out to the garage and see if you can find a, um, they will, um, um, find one of the, the, what do you call them? Things with the bubbles. What are those called? Levels. Yes. A level would work. If you don't have one, just a pencil will work or a pencil and a ruler will work. But as you're doing this, double check. So you want to look and you want to say, is this straight? And how can you tell if it's straight? Uh, you can eye it, first of all, but you can also just measure it. So line up your measurement up here and go, all right, we're at this up here at the top. First line, and then I'm one inch plus one dash. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to measure it at this end. And I'm just going to double check and make sure that it's, it's as exact as I can make it. So yeah, one inch and one little dash. So that's good. Um, this one should be pretty easy because I'm just going to run it straight up on this side. The other thing you can do is if you have a board that you're using that's straight, um, and you can measure against the, the straight edges of the paper itself by using the ruler and lining the ruler up evenly with the bottom. It's a little tricky. It takes a little getting used to. Um, now, I recommend practicing this through a few times, but if you mess it up, no biggie, because you can always just um, print out a new picture. And, and work on it again. In fact, you might want to print out two just to start with. Okay, so I'm, I've got, it's seven inches wide, and how tall do I want it to be? This is eight inches here. I think I'm gonna go to eight and a half, right here. And to make that straight across, I'm going to measure from over here. So I went up eight and a half. Eight and a half. All right. Now, since I went with a half um, instead of just like eight, I'm going to um, have to make half inch instead of one inch squares. So that's something that you want to take into consideration. If you have even inches on each side, you can make one inch squares. Um, if you have a half, well, that's going to throw things off a little bit. Um, but that's pretty easy to deal with. Like if you wanted to just add another half inch up here, you could do that, make it nine inches. If you wanted to take it down uh, to right about here, then it's an even eight inches. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mess with that a little bit because I didn't think about that when I was first making it. So I'm lined back up at the bottom here with my ruler and I'm going to start with one inch intervals here. So making sure that my, the, the first line of my ruler. So you don't want it lined up with the edge of your ruler, but with the first line of your ruler. And I was a little bit off, so I'm actually going to have to make a little erase there. This takes time, and it's okay that it takes time. I don't want you to feel like you're behind or rush through this at all. Um, just the process of setting up the drawing takes time to do. So now at the bottom I have a dash at one inch intervals. And I'm actually just going to flip this over and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. One inch intervals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And now I can actually just run by lining the edge of my ruler up with each dash, one here at the top, one here at the bottom, it will keep my ruler straight, number one, it'll make a nice straight line, and it'll also make sure that my, my boxes stay even. Now I'm gonna actually run up further, because I think I'm gonna actually ex extend up past that line. You don't have to do that, but. I haven't decided what I'm doing with the top end. So take your time with this. Line things up carefully. 
Make sure you're putting enough pressure down on your ruler so that it doesn't move. Okay, so now I have my, my lines that go vertically and now I'm going to make the horizontal lines. Now, because I thought it through and I don't really want to do half inch boxes, I feel like that's just, it's too much. Um, I'm going to extend this up by half an inch and make it an even nine so that I don't have to worry about it. So I'm just knocking this up a little bit more here here see it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this stuff we always end up making changes and adjustments as we go along some people call them mistakes Bob Ross calls them happy accidents I just call them part of life just something that happens all right, so now I made that adjustment. So now I've got nine inches uh, up by seven inches across, and I'm going to make my um, make my horizontal line. So the same thing I did before, lining this first notch on my ruler up with the edge here, and I'm going to go across at one inch intervals. And I'm being careful that I'm actually marking in the right spot. All these little lines can kind of blend together sometimes and you have to double check and make sure that you're not um, doing it as an inch and a quarter or an inch and a dash. You need to get them as exact as possible otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose of, of taking the time to make the grid. If, you, um, if it gets all out of whack right at the start all right, so then I'm going to run across the same as I did before. I need my ruler up as good as I can, as solidly as I can. Okay, so now I have a seven by nine grid with one inch squares. Now you'll notice that a couple of areas, especially over the animal here, they get a little bit hard to see. So if you wanna go over those um, or use a marker, um, make sure it's a really fine tip. Don't use, don't use like a regular Sharpie um, because that, is, that makes it too, too thick to see um, the detail underneath. So once you've dis you've got your um, grid and it's seven by nine by one inch squares, and I'm going to make the same thing over here. Um, so now, and here's another thing that's that's very important, and you want to be careful with as you start this. Um, you don't want to draw these lines heavily. You want to go very very light. You want to be able to see them, but you want to be able to erase them because that's the thing about the grid drawings is we want to get rid of that grid um, as soon as we can. We don't want to keep it uh, to keep it around. All right, now this paper is nine by I think twelve, um, and I'm making a drawing that is seven by nine. So I'm actually going to go in an inch on each side to make my box first. So I'm actually measuring it out um, an inch on each end here, down there, at the bottom of the page, and again at the top of the page. 
and then I can run a nice straight line by lining up those two dashes on either side. So this way, I'm not even. I'm. I'm also taking into consideration the end result that I want here. Where do I want my animal situated on the page? Um, how do I want it to look? Um, and so then I have. I'm going to go up one inch from the bottom here. And then I'm going to end up leaving a little bit more space at the top, I think. Because that way I can just trim the paper and have a one inch border all around. Lining up, making my nice straight line. You want every line to be plumb, okay, to be um, true to the sides of the papers so that nothing is at a diagonal. All right, so now I'm going to go up nine inches from, not from the base of the page, uh, but from the bottom of my, the box that I've drawn, that's going to be the edge of my drawing that corresponds to the outer edge of the, uh, the picture box that I've made for my grid. So here I'm going to end up having a little bit extra space at the top. And then that way, I can just trim it off and have a one inch border all around. All right, now those lines you can go as, as dark as you want on. Um, the lines that really matter that you want to go very light on are the interior lines. Now I am going to have to go darker so that you can see them on the film. So I'm actually not going to be able to erase my lines. But now I'm going to follow the exact same procedure that I started with um, the on the picture itself where I'm making dashes at one inch, two inch, three inch, four, five, six. And again at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to make them all along the other edges. This time it's going to go to nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine is the end. Oh, look at that. That's off a little bit. Have to fix that. One, two, three, four. Eight. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and connect all of my lines to create my grid. And I'm going to go, you are going to go much, 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 much lighter than I do on this. Try to put the least amount of pressure um, that you can onto this as you are working. You do not want to, you want to be able to erase these lines easily. If you have drawing pencils at home, um, use a 2H or a 4H to do this. If you don't, I mean, I used to use drawing pencils a lot, um, but over time I've actually just kind of just stuck to using my handy dandy yellow number two pencil. Um, it's actually better to have the control to be able to use a simp one, one tool um, as opposed to needing a bunch of tools to do one job. So I don't ever want you to think that you have to have particular tools. Um, the tools do not make the artist. They are helps. They can um, make things easier sometimes. But there almost this, there's very little that requires particular tools when it comes to art. Most of what you, you will learn is that 
it's in your eye and in your hand and not the tools. Now, having poor tools can make things a little bit um, harder to, to do or to, to handle well, um, but they will never break you as an artist. Neither will having the right tools or good tools um, make you as an artist. Okay, so now I have my two, my two grids. Um, I have the grid over the photo and the grid that I'm going to draw on. Um, you can, if you want to, number your grids along the sides. And this is one way of keeping track of where you're at. This isn't uh, absolutely necessary. It can be a help. Um, it can help you not get to, to if you get confused. Um, it can also help if you uh, want feedback, because then I can say, look at square uh, one five or seven three. Okay, so now I have two grids. I'm gonna have to lift this up. Actually. Let's see. This foot keeps getting in the way. I wish there were a better way. I need like a fancy, fancy making video YouTube setup. Wait, wait, what was that I just said about not needing fancy tools? This gets the work done just fine. All right, so now we proceed in the exact same way um, that we did in the earlier ones. Um, it's a little bit more complicated. I'm not gonna kid you because there's more information that you have to find. And when I made the simple drawings for you guys to work from, I did it knowing that you would find simple points. But if we look at this image, there are points we can find. So um, just look at it for a second and then think to yourself or say out loud, because I talk to myself all the time, um, where are some points that you could find? Some, some, some places where uh, the edge maybe intersects with a line or an edge ends. Um, right now I'm seeing the really clear points are literally the points of the horns. So a point here and a point here. I also see a point where the, the horn intersects or touches the top of this line here. That's a good spot to map out as well as where it intersects here and here and here. At, in fact, every point of intersection, think back to those very first, um, uh, drawing boxes that we did that had the measurements and um, where you were measuring along the edge to find where a point was. That's that's why we did this, is to prepare for this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start working on measure, measuring. Um, you might want to grab your barbecue skewer if you have one. Um, you can grab your ruler if you want to use that uh, or just your pencil works just fine as well. Um, I'm going to start in column three here to find the tip of this because it's the highest point in the picture. Um, sometimes I like to work left to right because we read left to right. Other times I like to work top to bottom. And I'm just going to, right now I'm just going to look at it. I'm going to look at the negative space here and here. And I'm just going to kind of note where that is, um, that sort of the center. It's really actually quite the center here. So I'm on row one or column three of row one. And that is about where this edge touches here. So I know it comes up to here. What else do I need to know to, to find this? Now, first of all, like I said with in the puppy video, you don't have to measure every point right from the start. You can eye things sketch them out, and then check them. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just looking at this contour. And for the time being, I am not gonna try to draw all of these little bumps because that is a lot of information that I don't really need. So I'm just going to draw it smooth at this point. And I'm just going to draw a curve. That's this curve right here. Do you see that? Then I'm going to double check because it's such a small, small amount. And I'm just going to, uh, let's see, try to figure out how to do this without covering the camera with my hand there. So it's just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. 
so, and actually, yeah, I need to move that up slightly. I curved it just a little bit too much there. And on the other side. And that one actually is pretty good. So we're gonna leave that one. All right, so I've made my first line and I've created this shape in the same box. So it's going three over two down and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start out by following this top curve from here all the way over to here and then I'm gonna start coming back so the next thing I want to check is where it ends in this box this box 2 2 and it's pretty close to the edge do you see that it's about right here so I'm gonna eye it first make a little mark then I'm gonna go back and I'm going to check it. Now, if it makes you nervous to eye it first, then you just go right ahead and measure it um, right from the get-go. Now, <clears throat> there's the question of the curve itself. It's not a straight line, right? We did a lot of sort of connecting the dots with straight lines in our exercises, but this doesn't do that, it curves out. So when I'm making this connection, I want to keep that in mind. Um, and so I'm going to sketch it first, making it as a curve, not a straight line. And then I'm going to just pick some random spots along the curve and just check it. Go, oh, that's actually pretty good. That's not bad. And I'm checking it against these edges, against my boxes. All right. And then let's double check this end here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just find that ending point right away. And of course, any interior point you need to map on both the X and Y axes, right? We have to find where it is from not only the sides, but from the top and bottom as well. If we just do it one, it's going to end up being in the wrong spots. It's actually, I was pretty close there. All right, so now I know it ends there and I'm going to curve in. And it's not a point point. It's a little bit of a, it's a point, but it's not like a sharp point. So I'm going to make that curve and start going back up. And I'm going to find this point, this spot, right where that part of the horn intersects with um, with that line. So going here and I'm going to double check that exterior one too. That seems thin to me but I just just don't know. Yeah, I think I went in a little bit too far there. It needs to come back out. So take your time with this. Don't Don't rush it. Um, it's a long process. Um, it takes time to see things. It takes time to see the details. Um, it takes time to get the measurements right. And, and it's okay. You need, to, you need to know that it's okay that it takes time. We are not in a hurry. We don't have to rush this um, at all. You don't have to finish this drawing today. In fact, I desperately do not want you to finish it today. I want you to get the grid done um, and maybe get a little bit of a start on it. But I don't want you to. I don't want you to rush through this at all. Yeah. See now, I often like to double check my measurements from multiple angles, um, especially when I'm sitting. When I'm standing and I've got the. Um, got my drawing board or my canvas vertical, then it's much easier to make uh, measurements and decisions. Once you're sitting though, it changes the perspective. And so it, it kind of messes with your ability to measure. If you're running into that a lot, um, one helpful thing is actually to stand, to stand over it while you're making your measurement decisions. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good here. I've got a good start on this nice curve here. And I'm going to 
So we'll check that. It's where it would be really helpful to be ambidextrous. Um, you know, to be able to use both hands equally well. I don't really know very many people, I don't know anybody really who's ambidextrous. Everybody's either right or left dominant. Um, I'm right dominant, which is actually why my reference material, my reference photo is on, on the left. Because if I were left dominant, my hand would be over it all the time. Um, so if you're a lefty, make sure that you set up your, your work so that you've got your grid on the left side um, and your reference on the right side. You kind of want to do everything opposite um, of what I'm doing. All right. So now I'm in uh, square 4-2 here. And I'm going to find that measurement here. I'm going to go down from top because it just... Between the shadows and not being able to see where my thumbnail is, it's tough to go the other direction. Although it's awkward to hold your hand like this, too. Um, I'm going to make that curve, and then I'm going to double check it. And at this point, really, it's totally fine to have um, just a series of small straight lines. Uh, I don't want you worrying too much about what your about what your um, curves look like or how tidy your neat your lines look. See that says it's up further. I thought that was up further. All right, now on this side, I've got a couple things going on. I have this contour line here intersecting with my box line here. But before it intersects with the box line, it actually intersects with the, the contour of, or the outside edge of the other horn. So that, and that happens, whereabouts does that happen? About halfway through the box. So I'm going to see if I can make sure that I get that in there as well. That's going to come down. But then right here, so that needs to come further. It's where that other one picks up and starts. All right, so I've been at this for about half hour now. Um, this is... Like I said, it, it's a long process, um, and I'm going to keep going, but if you hit this point, um, I want you to go ahead and, and evaluate how much time you've got to put in this. Um, really working on something for half an hour, 40 minutes, is, is a very good amount of time, and like I said, I do not want this finished today. Um, even if you stopped it right here and all you had was the grid, um, and maybe just a couple of, of lines for the horns, that is absolutely fine. Take a picture of it, email it in. We're going to work on this drawing for the next week. So now I'm just really, I'm kind of eyeing this, this space right here. There's a little bit of negative space. Um, so negative space, of course, is a space in between. So it's between the corner of these grid box lines uh, and the contour. All right, and I'm going to find this, this spot right here. One of the more important things you're going to do is you're going to get used to mapping the intersections. You always want to be looking for the intersections. Where does the edge line intersect with your guideline? 
Where does it intersect with another edge line? Because those are excellent spots to map. Those are excellent spots to find. Um, they're easy to, to note um, because they become specific. That intersection makes it a specific spot. It gives it a coordinate. You can find it in space. Where just draw a curve, that's it's tricky. You can't, you can't, where do you put it? Where do you find it in space? Where does it exist? And the nice thing about grid lines, or later on, as you'll find as we do this, as we, um, we're going to work into other forms of doing this um, with the envelope and notional space, is that these guidelines, they're, they're constants. They're, they're not going to change. Um, you, can, you can count on them as long as you've done a good job setting it up. You don't have to worry about... Um, whether you got it right or not. So I'm mapping this spot right here. So that's checking it, making sure I'm in the right spot. Row five, column five, row three. Okay. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna come back up to this horn As you get more comfortable with this, you'll find that um, you'll, you'll, you'll just get more comfortable with um, sort of sketching it out first and then measuring. But I really want to stress that the importance of, um, of taking those measurements even after uh, you've made the sketch. It's kind of easy to sort of want to rush. Uh, we want to kind of get on to the next thing. Uh, whether it's wanting to get onto your next school subject or uh, maybe this is the last thing you're doing in a day and you're just ready to take a break. Um, it's easy to want to rush through this. And if that's kind of where you're at, uh, take a break. You know, pause the video, um, set it aside for a little bit, come back to it later. It's kind of the beauty of the online schooling is that you can work at at your own pace. You don't have to be constrained to specific classroom times. Oops, see that's off. Bringing that down. Okay, I'm double checking them in here. Okay, good. I'm in the right spot. The numbering really helps um, if you have a tendency to get sort of lost easily. Okay. Actually, almost through the basic shape. Now, like I said, at this point, I'm not worried about all of these lumps and bumps and the striations. That's going to come, that's going to come after. Right now, all I'm concerned about is just getting this basic contour, the, the shape of the outside edges. What we look at is kind of the lines, the lines of the picture. I use my my stick more as kind of a placeholder um, so that I kind of measure 
I don't have to flip my pencil around quite so much. I measure, I hold the place right here, I gotta bring that in. So these larger bumps, because they're kind of a bigger part of it, I'm going ahead and I'm kind of mapping them out. But I'm not looking for perfection with those right now. I just want them to, just want to know that they're there. Okay, coming down into this area. Where does that end? Again, I'm just looking for the intersections. Where does it intersect with this line? Now, so that's the really the development of the horns. Um, and then the ear starts directly underneath this part and overlaps. Let's find that let's find that intersection. I'm much higher than I thought it was. And then the back, so I'm right here in box four or five. That shape here. I'm just going to go ahead and, and sketch that out. And I'm not even going to really go back. It's such a smooth slope that I'm going to just sort of let it. Let it sit, and I'm going to map out the rest of that shape. So I notice there's sort of a mound here at the base of the neck, the base of the spine. Um, what is this, an edix? A Persian edix. That's cool. Okay. Must be related to the antelope. It looks kind of like an antelope. Of course, all deers are kind of kind of related, I think. Antelopes and deers and reindeers. I'll have to look that up. I was in Africa last summer and I saw herds of, of uh, impala. They were really cool. All right, so now this, like the edge, that front of that face here, it's almost flat. So I think I'm actually gonna leave that alone for the moment and I'm just gonna come down to eight row eight here and map out the basis of um, the shape. I'm gonna double check, I'm in, yeah, column five, row eight, directly underneath here. And it comes up, not quite to the corner, but almost, and then comes down, and then back up, but not all the way at that corner because that little beard, like that billy goat gruff beard here, comes forward at that point. And then the nose is going to come out over past this line here. It's getting probably tricky for you to see um, the parts over top of this. So I don't want to get too involved in those if they're going to be difficult for you to see. Okay, coming up into row seven, column four. I'm going to find this spot here. Moving it over. Oh, look at that. I nailed it. Nice. It's always fun. 
when I put a mark down and I go back and I check it and that's there. Check it from that side. Good. Nice. All right. And then that's that little bit of beard there. Just going to draw that down. And then again, I'm not going to worry too much about it getting it 100% exact at this point. Just indicate that it belongs there. And for this, I'm actually going to um, line up my papers a little bit better here. And I'm going to do an angle. So I'm going to try not to move my stick at all. Just move my body. I'm going to move it over here. And I'm going to just draw lightly down there. Um, so then I look down here and I see that it needs to come across into this one here. So that's a little bit off. But not, not too bad. The angle did all right. All right. Okay, so at this point, now that I have most of the contour of the shape in, and it's been like 45 minutes at this point, so this is way longer than... Um, then you guys should be worrying about working on it for right now. Um, so I'm going to call it a day on this video, and then I'm going to pick it up and finish the video um, for next week or, um, well, we'll see, yeah, probably next week, uh, so that you can follow through a little bit more on how to do the details um, and see see how it comes together that way on all of these like little interior details and how to map those out. So today, for this week, just focus on getting the overall contour, the outside lines of it. What you would look at and say that's the edges. If you were to distill this to a simple line drawing. And don't worry about any of the texture, don't worry about any of the value, don't worry about any of the small interior details. Just focus on large uh, shapes uh, and the overall outline. All right, have fun and send me a message if you have any questions.